A question for you. Have you ever played the game Telephone? You know, the game where someone whispers something to someone, and then that person whispers it to someone else, and then that person whispers it to someone else. And by the time you get through everyone playing, the original message is all messed up. I used to kind of dread that game. Most people seemed to like it, but somehow whenever it reached me, the message was always really messed up, so I felt like I was spreading nonsense. Well, either that or it was me all along that misheard it. Anyway, the game is all about communication and how things spread. Communication is incredibly important, not just for us, but for the things that we are made up of, like our cells. Cells make up all living things. And while they don't talk in the way that you and I do, it's important for their messages, their signaling, to be transmitted and received appropriately. Multicellular organisms need their many cells to be able to work together to carry out functions. Just consider all the cells working together in one of your organs, like your heart, for example. We're going to be talking a lot about receptors. A receptor is a molecule, such as a protein, where a signal molecule can bind. One place you can find receptors is on the surface of a cell membrane. When a signal molecule binds the receptor, amazing things can happen. The receptor might start activating another molecule for an action to happen. The receptor often changes its shape slightly in the process. More about that later. So receptor signal molecules. The signal molecule can be considered a ligand, a fancy term, which basically means that it's the smaller molecule that binds to a typically larger molecule. Signal molecules can be a variety of things, such as gas molecules or hydrophobic biomolecules like lipids or hydrophilic biomolecules like some kinds of proteins. But ligands are generally smaller than the receptors they bind. Ligands and receptors can have a very specific fit as well. Let's talk about the general sequence of cell signaling. First, reception. Typically, a signal molecule binds a receptor. Second, transduction. The receptor gets activated by this binding. This often means the receptor will change its shape. It could even involve a whole series of molecules changing their conformation in something called a signal transduction pathway. This can amplify the original signal. Third, response. There's some kind of response that is going to happen. A portion of DNA that is found in the nucleus getting transcribed, for example, that's a type of response. Now, cell signaling can involve intracellular signaling, which occurs within the cell itself, and intercellular signaling, where a cell communicates with another cell. In many cases, signaling involves both, signaling between cells and then also signaling within cells. Now, when we're talking about signals traveling from one cell to another, distance matters. Some cells are close and have direct contact. In the case of these two animal cells, they are gap junction close. Gap junctions in these animal cells, or plasmodesmata in plant cells, are connections between two close together cells that allow ions or other small molecules to pass. And by doing so, they don't have to pass across the cell membrane. Paracrine signaling allows a cell to target another cell by a signal molecule that may diffuse between them. These cells are still close, but need not be connected. The ligands in paracrine signaling tend to be rapidly absorbed and rapidly degraded. The ligands are typically not traveling far, as this is local signaling. Synaptic signaling, which specifically involves neurotransmitters in a synapse, is another example of this local signaling. And what about long distance? Endocrine signaling can allow a cell to communicate with a target cell from far away. Signals may be carried in the bloodstream. Hormones released by certain types of endocrine cells are a great example. We also want to point out that a cell could just signal itself. For example, in autocrine signaling, a cell could secrete a certain type of molecule, which then binds to its own receptor and causes a response. A cell releasing its own growth factor could be an example of this. Let's just give a few signaling examples so we can get a basic understanding of the vocab and what this can look like. Let's say we have a steroid hormone that travels through the cell's semi-permeable membrane. Remember, that would mean the steroid hormone is our signal molecule, our ligand. Once inside the cell, it binds to a protein receptor within the cell. Now, the protein receptor is active. The protein receptor travels into the nucleus where the cell's DNA is found. This protein receptor binds to DNA and is involved in getting transcription of a certain gene going, which eventually can be used to produce a specific protein. This is an example of signaling inside the cell. Simplified a bit. 
Now, in the example, the receptor was inside the cell, a cytoplasmic receptor. But it doesn't have to be. Receptors are frequently part of the cell's membrane surface. If a receptor is sitting outside of the cell membrane surface, then the ligand doesn't have to come in. In fact, there could be properties of the ligand that may not allow it to pass through the membrane. The ligand could be hydrophilic, which would make it hard to pass through. Let's mention an example of a cell surface receptor type, a ligand-gated ion channel. Ions normally don't go unassisted through the cell membrane. They are charged after all, see our cell transport video, but a ligand-gated ion channel gives them a way through, through a channel, but it is controlled. In this example, the channel is closed, but here comes a signal molecule, a ligand. It binds the receptor, which is the channel protein in this case. Now the channel protein responds by opening. The ions, not the ligand, go through. Once ions get through, the concentration of ions increases in the cell. And you may wonder, okay, so now there are ions in the cell. Why does that matter? Well, the increasing ion concentration can trigger a cellular response. After reaching a certain concentration and stimulating a cell response, the ligand can leave its binding site from the receptor and the channel can close. Ligand-gated ion channels can be used by neurons. A neurotransmitter may be the ligand for the channel to open. This could happen at a synapse. But just be aware that not all ion channels are ligand-gated ion channels. Ion channels can be gated by other things. A voltage-gated ion channel, for example, depends on electrical membrane potential, not a ligand. By the way, voltage-gated ion channels are used by neurons too. Check out action potential in neurons to learn more. There are other types of cell membrane surface receptors that we don't have time to go into in this video. G-protein-linked receptors and enzyme-linked receptors are two other types that we encourage you to explore. So in summary, why do we care about the cell signaling thing? Well, realize that your body processes that keep you alive rely on your cell's ability of cell signaling. From the regulation of your heartbeat to the hormone signals traveling long distances in your body to the way neurons in your brain communicate, your multicellular self needs cell signaling. But there are many disorders where cell signaling does not work as it should. And so understanding all of the complexities of cell signaling is critical in order to find ways to treat them. Cancer is an example of a disease that can involve body cells with problems in cell signaling. We mentioned autocrine signaling. A cancer cell could have a problem where it produces too much of its own growth factor, causing excessive cellular division. Cancer cells can also have many other cell signaling difficulties where they do not function like normal healthy cells. Or another example, there are also pathogens, such as viruses or bacteria, that can take advantage of cell signaling. Consider the virus HIV, which targets helper T cells. Helper T cells are important to immune cells in your body, and they have something called a CD4 receptor on their surface. That receptor is so important so that helper T cells can communicate with other immune cells. But as mentioned in our viruses video, HIV targets that CD4 receptor. It is because of the virus binding to that receptor on helper T cells that the virus can attach and infect the cell in the first place, a fact that continues to be researched for treatment options. The understanding of the details of cell signaling continues to expand. Well. That's it for the Muba sisters, and we remind you to stay curious.